Haunted Objects. 10. The Ghost Cane. The Ghost Cane was auctioned off on eBay by Mary Anderson for $65,000. She had hoped the sale would ease the fears of her young son who believed that his grandfather's ghost still roamed their home. The cane reached 130 to bids. The Ghost Cane's new home is the Golden Palace Casino in Antigua where it was placed alongside a grilled cheese sandwich that bears the face of the Virgin Mary. 9. The Conjure Chest. 150 years ago, Jacob Cooley ordered his slave to build a chest for his first child. The slave crafted the wooden chest, but for some unknown reason, Cooley was displeased with his efforts and beat him to a pulp, killing him. The other slaves vowed to avenge the death and sprinkled the dried blood of an owl in the chest and had a conjure man curse the chest. As if by magic, Ghoulie's firstborn died in infancy and over the forthcoming years a total of 17 deaths were attributed to the chest. Eventually the curse was lifted by a conjure woman. The chest can be found in the Kentucky History Museum in Frankfurt. 8. The Cursed Painting the Crying Boy is a mass-produced print of a Bruno Amadio painting which was popular throughout the 1950s and beyond. However, the painting attracted media attention in the 1980s when a firefighter claimed to have been at the scene of several house fires where the painting had been the only household item left unscathed. He also said that no firefighter would dare to have the painting in their home for fear of inciting a house fire. After a BBC investigation into the paintings, it was revealed that they were covered in a fire repellent varnish. 7. Valentino's Ring. Rudolph Valentino was one of Hollywood's greatest silent movie stars. He died of a perforated ulcer at the age of 31. Some blame his early demise on a ring he purchased from a jeweler in 1920. But Valentino wasn't the ring's only victim. His lover Polinegri became gravely ill after wearing the ring, Russ Colombo, wore the ring and was killed in a shooting accident some days later, and the gangster Joe Casino bought the ring and refused to wear it until the curse had faded. After several years he finally put the ring on and was dead within a week due to a motoring accident. The list goes on. But since the 1960s the ring's whereabouts have remained unknown. 6. The Possessed Bunk Beds The case of the haunted bunk beds was so famous that the tale found its way onto the hit TV show Unsolved Mysteries. In 1987, the Dolmans brought home a bunk bed from a second-hand shop and put it down in the basement. Later that year, the couple moved the beds upstairs, and nine months of hell ensued. First of all, the children of the house became ill. A radio would jump from station to station without anyone touching it, and the first two children to sleep in the bed said they saw a witch. The Tormans got a pastor in and things schooled for a while. Then, one day Alan Tallman came home and heard a voice telling him to come here. He followed it to the garage where he witnessed a blazing fire. Rushing to grab an extinguisher, Alan returned to the scene only to see the fire had vanished. A few more creepy circumstances later and the Dolmans had had enough they burned the bunk beds. From then on, the paranormal activity ended. 5. Screaming Skull of Burton Agnes Hall Burton Agnes Hall in Driffield, East Yorkshire was built during the reign of Queen Elizabeth I by Sir Henry Griffiths and his sisters. During the build one of Sir Henry's sisters, Anne, was stabbed and killed by an unknown assailant. Before she passed on, she requested that her head be removed from her body and kept in the hall. Her sisters, assuming the request was just near-death delirium, never made good on their promise, instead burying her body in a grave, intact. Shortly after the burial, groaning could be heard throughout the hall. A little freaked out, the sisters visited the family vault and found their sister's head had decayed to a skull and was remarkably detached from the body. The sisters took the skull and placed it in the hall whereupon the groaning and moaning ceased. Sir Henry and the sisters eventually died and their descendants and new occupants of the hall attempted to remove the skull but each time the skull was removed the building would tremble and portraits would fall from the walls. 
Finally one of Sir Henry's descendants agreed to keep the skull in the house but only if it was bricked up behind a wall, where it remains today. 4. The Chair of Death. The Balleroy Mansion in Pennsylvania was built in 1911. The building has accrued many artifacts of but historical importance. The mansion's last inhabitant, George Medesby, a descendant of seven signers of the Declaration of Independence, died in 2005. Before his death, he claimed to have had many ghostly experiences around the house most notably the ghost of his brother, Stephen who died suddenly as a young child, his mother, and none other than the ghost of Thomas Jefferson himself. However, the most unsettling tales come from the infamous Blue Room and the Chair of Death which can be found there. The chair is a 200-year-old blue upholstered wing chair, which some say once belonged to Napoleon Bonaparte. Several paranormal investigators believe a female ghost haunts the chair and George's nickname for the spirit found in this particular room would back that claim up, Spectral Amelia. It is said that whenever Amelia is present, a blue mist descends upon the room and that anyone who is brave enough to sit in the chair when the spirit is in attendance will die suddenly. To this day four people have poo-pooed the claim and brazenly sat in the chair. Oddly, those very same people perished. 3. The Haunted Wedding Dress Anna Baker was the daughter of Elias Baker, a rich iron magnate in the 1800s. He was loving and gave her all that money could buy. Anna wanted something that couldn't be bought true love. Her father wanted her to be with a man of equal social standing. However, Anna fell for a handsome, low-paid iron worker at her father's blast furnace. The loving father turned to archetypal angry dad in a heartbeat. He wouldn't allow her to run off with someone who wasn't good enough for her. But being as stubborn as her father Anna decided that if she couldn't marry the man she wanted, she would not marry a man at all. She lived as pinster and died as pinster. And she never got to wear the flamboyant wedding dress she's picked out with her mother. Not in this life at least. Until recently that wedding dress was on display at the Blair County Historical Society's museum in the Baker Mansion, in Anna's old bedroom no less, in front of a mirror. It was kept in a glass box, where it was said to sway from side to side. Many believe that Anna, dressed for her wedding day for eternity, was adoringly admiring herself in a mirror. 2. Annabelle the Possessed Doll A girl named Donna had received an antique doll as a present from her mother in 1970. At the time, she was training to be a nurse and lived in a small apartment with her friend, Angie. She placed the doll on her bed and strange things started happening. The doll seemingly had the ability to move about on its own. Sometimes the girls would come home to find the doll in a different room from where they had left her, even finding her sat cross-legged on the couch with its arms folded. The girls would find handwritten notes written in a crude child's writing. The message read, Help us. Blood started to appear on the doll, from nowhere. The girls called for a essence where they were acquainted with a spirit called Annabelle Higgins a seven-year girl who had been found murdered on the plot of land the apartment the girls lived in was built on. Once they heard Annabelle's story the girls agreed that that spirit could stay in the doll and in the apartment. A bad decision. One of their close friends, Lou, had told the girls over and over again to ditch the doll and the dislike was clearly a two-way street. One evening when Lou was in Angie's bedroom he was attacked by an unseen force that left him with seven claw marks on his chest. Paranormal investigators concluded that the doll was not possessed by a spirit girl but by a malevolent spirit who wanted to eventually possess a human host. The demonic spirit had manipulated and preyed on the girl's emotional weaknesses, currying favor with them and lying in wait, until eventually it would have tried to possess them. Annabelle was removed from the apartment and to this day it remains in the Warren Occult Museum in Moodus, Connecticut. Annabelle still moves around on the odd occasion and, it is said, even growls at visitors. 1. The Haunted Mirror. In 1817, the Woodruff family lived at Myrtle's plantation. One evening Mr. Woodruff caught a slave named Chloe eavesdropping on one of his private conversations and cut off her ear. 
Then, Chloe made a birthday cake for the Woodruff's eldest daughter but spiked it with poisonous oleander leaves. Chloe, knew the antidote, and wanted to nurse them back to health so she could get back in her master's good graces. However, she got the dosage wrong and Sarah and two of his children died of poisoning. Distraught by her actions, Chloe confessed to the other slaves who panicked, believing they'd be blamed for hiding the culprit, hanged her and threw her lifeless body in the river. There's an old southern tradition stating that when a family member dies, all the mirrors in the home must be covered up so that the soul of the deceased will pass on and not become trapped in a reflection of this world. As was the norm, on the night of the tragic poisonings all the mirrors in the house were covered up except one. Aside witnessing a dark-skinned ghost wandering the plantation, visitors to the bed and breakfast are also shown an ornate mirror inside the home where the souls of the mother and children are said to be trapped. Some claim to see handprints, others the faces of children.